Yeah, hold on. Yes, we're live now. Yes, doctor, please continue. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I welcome all of you to this uh, webinar uh, as a part of this Ahimsa Fest. Um, I would like to uh, thank the Ahimsa Fest team for organizing this webinar. And today we are going to be speaking about plant-based nutrition for autoimmune diseases. And I'm Dr. Saranan here. Uh, I would like to start the session uh, by giving a short introduction about myself. So basically, I'm a homeopathic doctor, and it was my personal healing journey that led me to explore nutrition. I was suffering with various health issues since childhood, and I was uh, actually looking for a complete solution, a complete cure for all these problems. And uh, I was learning various methods of healing to uh, cure myself. And, um, and in this journey, I, uh, I learned more about uh, nutrition and then and I applied, all, applied the uh, <clears throat> techniques which I had learned and uh, I got very good results. And this inspired me to learn further about nutrition. And uh, um, so I'm here now uh, presenting this webinar. And I have been doing so many web seminars and workshops and wellness retreats to help people reverse various lifestyle diseases. And today our topic is about autoimmune diseases, uh, which are really challenging for the mankind and uh, also for the doctors. So uh, I hope uh, all of you would be able to uh, understand the various causes and factors uh, which lead to these autoimmune diseases, and you would be able to um, you know, learn more about uh, the alternative approach to recover from autoimmune diseases. So uh, before entering into the uh, topic, I would like to uh, give a short introduction about autoimmune diseases. So autoimmune diseases are disorders of the immune system. And it is estimated that uh, more than 700 million people around the globe are affected with autoimmune conditions. And nearly 80% of those affected with an autoimmune disease uh, are women. There are more than 80 autoimmune diseases that have been identified. So normally, the immune system protects the body against external infections and invasions. And there are various cells uh, which are uh, functioning as a part of the immune system to achieve this. Whereas in an autoimmune disorder, the body's own immune system starts functioning against the body. So this is like the own immune system attacking the body and damaging the healthy cells, tissues, organs, etc. So there are various types of autoimmune diseases. As I said, there are more than 80 uh, autoimmune diseases uh, identified and um, investigators are still in the process of finding uh, new uh, types of autoimmune disorders. And I would like to uh, mention about a few of these autoimmune disorders, which are most common. Um, psoriasis and vitiligo, which affect the skin, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, and celiac disease, uh, these are autoimmune disorders which affect the digestive system and uh, they are collectively called inflammatory bowel disease. And there are also autoimmune disorders which affect the joints such as rheumatoid arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis and psoriatic arthritis. And uh, type 1 diabetes is also 
an autoimmune disorder which affects the pancreas and leads to uh, this condition. So Hashimoto's thyroiditis and Graves' disease are those autoimmune disorders which affect the thyroid gland. And multiple sclerosis is one autoimmune disorder which affects the central nervous system. And Sjogren's syndrome is a form of autoimmune disease where the exocrine glands are affected. Systemic lupus erythematosus or SLE is another autoimmune disease, which is a systemic autoimmune disease affecting different body systems, such as joints, skin, kidney, blood cells, brain, heart, and lungs. So these are some of the uh, autoimmune diseases which are very common uh, in clinical practice. And uh, the evidence suggests that if a person has one form of autoimmune disease, he or she is at risk for falling victim to other types of autoimmune diseases. So this is called comorbidity. Although there are many different types of autoimmune diseases affecting different organs, overblown inflammation is a common thread in these conditions. That means this inflammation is one thing which is similar to all of these autoimmune diseases. So uh, people suffering with autoimmune diseases try various approaches, especially with conventional medicine. They, are, uh, they have to consume medications lifelong to control the exacerbation of symptoms. And uh, though the medicines are helpful in controlling the symptoms, the disease still remains. And uh, they usually uh, the sufferers of autoimmune disorders end up with complications of these autoimmune diseases. And it's really a difficult challenge even for uh, doctors to deal with autoimmune diseases. And needless to say about the sufferings and the stress which those patients undergo. So today we are going to uh, explore about other options for recovering from autoimmune disorders apart from medications. So if we want to uh, recover from any autoimmune disease, we should understand the basic causes or the underlying causes of autoimmune diseases though uh, researchers are still in the process of investigating the exact causes of these autoimmune diseases, there are certain factors which have been identified as triggering factors for these autoimmune diseases. So we are going to explore about these. So, uh, some of the underlying causes for autoimmune diseases are genes, infections, environmental factors, and gut health. So I'm going to be explaining about each of these causative factors in detail. So many of us think that autoimmune diseases can be hereditary. It's true to some extent because genetic susceptibility can make a person prone to autoimmune disease. However, gene expression can be turned on and turned off through environmental and lifestyle choices. That means if we have a hereditary tendency to uh, express an autoimmune disorder by changing our eating habits, by changing our lifestyle and reducing exposure to environmental toxins, we can prevent the autoimmune disease from expressing. So that is a really good news for us. Then another possible cause for autoimmune diseases is infection. Chronic infections and inflammations because of viral or bacterial in invaders can also trigger autoimmune reaction. So this is another reason uh, for autoimmune disorder. 
And uh, I would like to discuss more about environmental factors, which also could be uh, some of the causative agents for some of the autoimmune disorders. So toxins and harmful chemicals in the environment, in our food, water, and air, pesticides, insecticides, herbicides, toxic heavy metals, food additives, certain drugs, all these can trigger autoimmune reaction. And there are also other environmental factors such as uh, exposure to sunlight and nutritional uh, deficiencies can also lead to autoimmune disorders. Um, for example, lack of sunlight exposure and low vitamin D level can be detrimental to the immune system. And this can make a person prone to autoimmune diseases. Very importantly, I would like to discuss more about gut health. So it was Hippocrates, the father of medicine, who said all disease begins in the gut. So our gut plays a vital role in, uh, in the immune in 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 our immune system because eighty percentage of our immune system cells are packed in our gut. And there are different strains of beneficial bacteria in the gut, which can positively influence our immune system. We call these beneficial bacteria as our intestinal microbiome or our gut microbiome. So these different strains of beneficial bacteria, which colonize our gut, not only influences the immune system positively, but also help in absorption and assimilation of nutrients from the foods we eat and in the synthesis of certain vitamins, for example, vitamin K2. So these bacteria play a vital role in inhibiting the pathogenic or harmful bacteria and other microorganisms from invading the gut and causing trouble. Besides these, the bacterial flora in the gut provide a protective coating on the intestinal walls and help promote the peristaltic action in the intestine. This is very essential for regular bowel movement. And this is one reason we see many people suffering with constipation these days, because many people are uh, not having healthy intestinal flora. So when the healthy intestinal flora is replenished, you can see improvement in bowel movement. And when the normal gut microbial communities are disturbed, it can lead to dysbiosis. So when these microorganisms and um, when, when, when we and uh, the micro, when our body and the microorganisms are in harmony, we call it symbiosis. But when there is a disturbance in this, we call this as dysbiosis or SIBO, also called small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. So what causes this type of dysbiosis? There are various factors which can lead to this dysbiosis or the destruction of these healthy bacterial colonies. Certain medications such as antibiotics and steroids, a diet which is high in refined carbs, sugar and alcohol, a diet which is highly acidic, having more processed foods, packed foods, and junk foods. These all can affect the gut microflora and can lead to this dysbiosis condition, which can further lead to immune system suppression. So it is very essential to maintain a balanced state of the immune system so that we will not be suffering from autoimmune disorders. For this, we need all these healthy bacteria to thrive in our system. So another important factor which can lead to autoimmune disease is leaky gut. So leaky gut is, uh, is 
Leaky gut is one of the important causes of some of the autoimmune diseases, or we can say most of the autoimmune diseases. You know, the intestinal, you know, the intestines have a protective lining of cells called enterocytes. And these are nourished by the butyric acid produced by the digestion of fiber by the beneficial bacteria. If the, if the healthy bacteria in the gut are affected because of some reasons, as I, uh, as I described above, maybe because of uh, unhealthy diet or unhealthy lifestyle, the enterocytes in the colon are usually undernourished and this can lead to a condition called leaky gut, which is believed to be one of the most important causes for various autoimmune diseases. So because of this leaky gut, food particles, toxins, and infections can get through the intestinal lining and into the bloodstream, creating inflammation. So as I said, inflammation is the common thread which runs in all these autoimmune disorders. So if we want to cure, if we want to address any of these autoimmune diseases, we have to deal with this inflammation. And we'll be exploring more about how to do this through our food and lifestyle. And I would like to explain more about another important factor which can also lead to autoimmune disorders. So this we call as molecular mimicry. So we are aware that there are people who are sensitive to the proteins in milk called casein, and also to the protein in certain grains such as wheat, bar barley, and rye called gluten. So this gluten and casein look very similar to our body cells. And in the process of attacking these foreign proteins, the immune system gets confused and starts attacking our own tissues, which then leads to autoimmune reaction. Though there are various factors which can trigger autoimmune disorders, the food factors are often unnoticed. If we could understand the connection between the foods which we eat and the diseases, we would be able to tackle most of the lifestyle diseases. And there are so many research studies which are now proving that our that wrong foods are responsible for most of the lifestyle diseases which we are suffering from. So I would like to explain more about certain food factors which can lead to this inflammation and autoimmune disorder. So for those who have joined uh, recently, I would like to uh, just uh, recap what we have been uh, discussing. So autoimmune diseases are basically uh, inflammatory diseases and there are so many uh, autoimmune disorders identified and the most common of these disorders are psoriasis, vitiligo, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, celiac disease, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, Graves' disease, type one diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis, Sjogren's syndrome, SLE, and multiple sclerosis. Besides these, there are so many other autoimmune diseases. And uh, most of these autoimmune diseases are caused because of inflammation. So in this inflammation uh, can be because of various factors, various causes. And we were discussing about those causes, such as um, hereditary tendencies, genetic disposition, infections, environmental factors such as toxins in food, water, and air. And we were also discussing about gut health, which plays a vital role in maintaining the immune, in maintaining the health of the immune system. So if our intestinal microflora is affected 
that can lead to various problems such as malabsorption, lowered immunity, leaky gut, and then it leads to chronic inflammation and certain types of autoimmune diseases. And in this modern lifestyle, we, we, we have so many sophisticated things, but in spite of all the comforts, we are facing so many lifestyle diseases which are really challenging. So to overcome all these lifestyle diseases, we need to understand the connection between our food and these diseases. So uh, there are various research studies which have clearly shown the link between unhealthy foods and the, and the prevalence of lifestyle diseases. As far as autoimmune diseases are considered, um, there are foods which can lead to inflammation. So we are going to see these things. We're going to uh, discuss about these foods in detail. Uh, but before that, I would also like to uh, say a few words about stress because stress is something which can trigger an autoimmune reaction. In my clinical experience, I have been seeing patients with autoimmune diseases uh, suffering uh, because of stress. This can be after the, this can be because uh, once they are diagnosed with the disease, they may feel stressed, or it can be because of a stressful event. Their this autoimmune disease could be triggered. So it works either ways. Whatever it could be, if we have to <clears throat> recover from these autoimmune diseases, then we have to address almost all of the. Uh, possible factors such as food, lifestyle, environment, stress, etc. So only when we address all these factors which are causing these autoimmune diseases, we would be able to recover or at least reduce the bad effects of this inflammation and control these autoimmune diseases. So, I would like to explain in detail about foods. So what type of foods actually cause these uh, type of inflammation? So as already discussed in, uh, already discussed, I was telling in brief that certain foods can trigger this inflammatory reaction. reaction. For example, casein, uh, which is a protein found in milk, can lead to this type of inflammatory reaction. Similarly, another protein called lactol lactolbumin, which is present in milk, can also be pro-inflammatory. Apart from this, there are various foods which we consider healthy, but these are causing inflammation in the body. For example, animal-based foods, which are high in protein and saturated fats, can lead to inflammation through the accumulation of advanced glycation end products, also known as AGES. And the dairy proteins, as I said earlier, like casein and lactalbumin are also pro-inflammatory. Besides this, there is something called gluten, which is present in wheat, barley, and rye. And, the, and this protein, which is also, which is again another uh, inflammatory factor. So these are certain foods which can trigger the inflammation. So whenever we want to address any autoimmune disease, we have to address food sensitivities. So I have only mentioned the very important uh, food sensitivities, such as dairy sensitivity and gluten sensitivity. Besides these, there are many other allergens there are people who are allergic to certain types of foods, such as soy, peanuts, and maybe to, uh, you know, this <clears throat> nightshade families, uh, for example, vegetables such as uh, eggplant and tomatoes. So we have to individually address all these issues to uh, tackle uh, the inflammatory process and to reduce inflammation. 
to recover from any autoimmune disease, we need to address the multiple factors that contribute to chronic inflammation and autoimmune reaction. Such a holistic approach is very essential and it is really helpful in even reversing autoimmune diseases. So what is the role of diet in managing autoimmune diseases? I would, I would like to uh, quote from uh, Hippocrates, the Greek physician, who said, let your food be your medicine. So this quote applies even for autoimmune diseases. Though autoimmune diseases can be triggered by various factors such as genetic susceptibility, infections, allergens, environmental factors, poor nutrition, and even stress, uh, in today's session, we are focusing mostly on the nutritional aspects. Nutritional intervention can be a very effective way to reduce inflammation and to prevent the complications of various autoimmune disorders. There are many people who are still suffering with these autoimmune diseases in spite of advancement in medical treatments. Unless these root causes of these diseases are addressed, there are minimal chances for recovering from these autoimmune disorders. So making changes in the diet and improving the nutritional status are very important steps in reducing inflammation and in balancing the overactive immune system. So how can we do this? How can we use food as medicine to deal with autoimmune disorders? So it is quite simple, but very effective solution. We have to start by eliminating those foods which tend to produce inflammation. For example, these pro-inflammatory foods such as meat, egg, dairy products, processed foods, junk foods, oily foods, all these can be slowly eliminated and we can start introducing healthier, plant-based alternatives, and we can start consuming nutrient-dense plant foods, which are the very effective ways to heal chronic inflammation. So plant-based foods are rich in fiber, and they serve as a very good media for the healthy bacteria to thrive. So we call, the, call these uh, as prebiotics, the fiber present in uh, most plant foods. So these are very essential for maintaining a healthy uh, gut symbiosis. So if we could maintain such a healthy gut flora, this would have a tremendous positive impact on the immune system. So what does a healing diet uh, comprise of? A healing diet for any autoimmune disease should include whole fruits, greens, lots of vegetables, and uh, grains which are gluten-free, and certain millets which are gluten-free can be included. Then uh, certain legumes uh, which are non-allergenic, which are very easy to digest, can also be included, then certain nuts and seeds are also uh, part of this anti-inflammatory diet. So now we are going to discuss in detail about uh, how to use a plant-based diet as a solution for most of these challenging autoimmune diseases. So many of you may be wondering how it, how would it be possible to just tackle these problems with food alone? So there are people who may be consuming medicines already 
and uh, they may be wondering would it be any use for me to start making changes in my diet so if we start making some changes in the diet that would be showing positive changes and with improvement there are more chances that certain medications can be withdrawn and the complications of many of the autoimmune diseases can be reduced to a greater extent and there are also people who have even reversed autoimmune diseases by following a healthy diet plan a healthy lifestyle keeping their cells stress free and uh, reducing exposure to most environmental toxins which i had uh, talked about so empirical evidence suggests that it would be possible to reverse certain types of autoimmune diseases and even if reversal is not possible a better quality of life with you know a uh, good health can be achieved if we are ready to make simple changes in the diet and many people think that making changes in the diet would be very difficult so it's all in the mindset if we can just make our minds ready to accept certain things if we are a little bit open minded we would be able to practice this that means we would be able to practice this plant based diet very easily it's it's a matter of you know uh, just simple planning and implementing if you're willing you would be enjoying most of your favorite foods see by an anti inflammatory diet it's, it's not that we are just going to be eating only salads we can enjoy all our favorite foods in spite of eliminating most of the foods most of the inflammatory foods because we have alternatives for everything for example we have so many alternatives for dairy we have so many alternatives for meat and egg healthy plant based alternatives are available these days and we can even cook foods without oils we can make the food tastier and healthier if we are a bit careful about the cooking methods and cooking techniques and i hope you might have uh, attended some of the interesting cooking classes in the ahimsa fest and you are able to explore many more so i would say that this is a very simple solution um wherever you are you can simply start trying um this plant based diet so how to start with a plant based diet it is very simple we just need to focus on these food groups such as fruits greens vegetables gluten free grains and millets and some nuts and seeds we can also have some legumes and pulses but uh, some people may be sensitive to certain legumes such as soy and peanuts which needs to be eliminated so here i am just going to uh, explain about a generalized diet plan but uh, this will not be sufficient for certain people because each person's body is different to a certain extent and it's always said it's one said it said that one one person's food can be one person's food can be another person's poison so individualizing the food would be very helpful especially with autoimmune diseases because we may have to eliminate certain allergens for example some people may be able to tolerate peanuts whereas some others may not be able to tolerate some may have allergies to certain nuts and some people may not have allergic reactions to nuts and some people may be able to tolerate soy whereas some people react uh react uh for react when they take uh, soy based foods 
So uh, individual discretion is very essential while implementing this plant-based diet. Fortunately, uh, there are nutritionists and doctors who are open about this uh, plant-based dietary approach. So if you need help, you can just uh, check with your doctor, or check with a doctor or a nutritionist who is well-versed with plant-based nutrition and can start implementing these changes. So in this webinar, I'm just going to give you some tips uh, which may be helpful in uh, transitioning to a plant-based diet, or if you're already on a plant-based diet, uh, these tips may be very helpful uh, to improvise your diet and to improve the nutrient quality of the diet. So I'm going to be explaining about uh, each and every plant plant based food plant based uh, foods as uh, I mean groups of plant based foods which are beneficial which are having the anti inflammatory effect. So to start with fruits. So fruits are rich in fiber, antioxidants, and phytonutrients. So if you are on a plant-based diet, you would be able to enjoy varieties of fruits. Even people who are having diabetes, especially type 1 diabetes, which is another autoimmune disease, they may be able to enjoy those forbidden fruits. So that's the beauty of a plant-based diet because uh, you'll have so many options. You'll not be missing anything. And... Um, you know, because of the fiber, because the fiber in fruit uh, serves as a media for the healthy bacteria to thrive, fruits are really, really helpful for many people who are suffering with inflammatory bowel disease and most other autoimmune diseases. So what are these antioxidants and phytonutrients? See, there are so many nutrients present in plant-based foods, which we call them phytonutrients, phyto means plant and, you know, nutrients. So these phytonutrients, each of these phytonutrients has been identified to have a certain property, a healing property. For example, lycopene in tomatoes can help prevent certain types of cancer. And uh, you know, the proanthocyanidins present in grapes can help in preventing certain types of cancers. So each and every fruit, vegetable, and green comes with certain types of antioxidants and phytonutrients. So the colors of these fruits, vegetables, and greens are because of these phytonutrients. So if you want to eat healthier, just focus on the colors, the natural colors. We naturally have the tendency to be attracted by colors. Uh, so um, we can now enjoy colorful fruits, vegetables, and greens, which will provide us with abundance of phytonutrients and anti-inflammatory nutrients. So these anti-inflammatory nutrients are present in abundance in, in most fruits. So antioxidants are really helpful in um, scavenging the free radicals, which are uh, you know, accumulating because of the metabolism and because also because of the toxic uh, atmosphere in the body. So the more antioxidants we consume, uh, the less inflammation there will be. So fruits are really helpful in that aspect. And uh, people suffering with autoimmune diseases may be able to enjoy most of the fruits, except uh, for some people who are highly sensitive to certain fruits. This is very rare phenomena. It's very rare to see people with fruit allergies, but this also happens. I have seen people with such problems. Uh, but otherwise, most of, most of the people can, would be able to enjoy all the fruits in the world. So to get the maximum benefits of fruits, 
we need to consume them in the whole form. Only then we will be getting the micronutrients along with the fiber. If we are simply juicing the fruits, we are losing the valuable fiber, which can serve as a prebiotic source. We can also consume fruits in the form of smoothies. So these smoothies will be very helpful for people uh, who are having uh, you know, inflammatory bowel disease. So there are different types of smoothies, uh, smoothie recipes available. We have to choose which works for us. For example, green smoothies are very helpful for people having diabetes, whereas for a person suffering with uh, colitis or ulcerative colitis, uh, he or she may be needing a, a pure banana smoothie without any other ingredients added to that, just water and pure banana. So that will be helpful in, so in giving a soothing effect to the uh, inflamed gut. So then I would like to uh, explain about the benefits of some vegetables. So there are so many vegetables available which are so colorful and these also provide us with fiber, vitamin C, beta carotene, which is a precursor of vitamin A, riboflavin, calcium, iron, and so many other nutrients. And uh, if we are consuming colorful fruits and vegetables and greens every day, we can simply and we can simply be assured that we are getting all the anti-inflammatory nutrients very easily. So it's not even necessary for us to you know check what anti-inflammatory nutrients are present in this particular vegetable or in this particular fruit, and we need not uh, go on searching about this. It's very simple. Just eat colorful fruits, vegetables, and greens. Let your plate be a rainbow filled with so many colors. And it'd be really interesting to eat such a plate with lots of you know, colorful vegetables and greens, which are really tasty and nutritious. Once you start eating healthier, your body will, will respond very positively. So I'll be explaining about the other benefits, I mean, the positive side effects of uh, following a plant-based diet. And let me explain a little bit about uh, these phytonutrients and antioxidants. I was telling, uh, so I told that uh, by eating colorful fruits and vegetables, we would be able to get many antioxidants and phytonutrients. So in this um, slide, you can see that all the colorful fruits and vegetables and greens have some form of antioxidant or phytonutrient present in them. For example, red color fruits and vegetables, they have lycopene, purple color vegetables and fruits have anthocyanins and polyphenols, and orange color vegetables and fruits have carotenes, and yellowish green and green color um, uh, vegetables, leafy greens, they have certain phytonutrients such as lutein and uh, indoles, so whatever is having a color naturally uh, will be having some form of nutrient. So it's nature's pharmacy and it is very easy to choose from. Then comes the legume groups. So legumes, uh, we can uh, get very good quality uh, fiber from legumes because most of the fiber and the legumes are not, uh, you know, are not properly digested. Uh, some people may have uh, blotting, especially people with inflammatory bowel disease. They need to be a bit careful while uh, using legumes. There are ways to uh, consume these legumes. For example, soaking beans would, and lentils would be really helpful in reducing the blotting sensation, which most people get after eating these, uh, these foods. Uh, so there are other ways also to reduce the uh, blotting by maintaining a proper combination of foods, so which we can discuss uh, later. So legumes also provide us with protein, but these are not inflammatory protein. 
except for certain legumes, for example, soy and peanuts may have may trigger an inflammatory reaction in some people who are sensitive, but otherwise most other legumes are safe for many people to consume if properly soaked and properly cooked. And legumes provide us with fiber, calcium, iron, zinc, and also B vitamins. And comes this gluten-free grains and millets. So what are, what are gluten-free grains? So the common gluten-free grain available in our country is rice. Yeah. So we have so many varieties of rice available. We have brown rice, red rice, bamboo rice, black rice, and even many other traditional varieties of rice. So we have to explore these rice varieties and we can cook different dishes using these uh, rice varieties and also with the flowers of this rice. So uh, that is one gluten-free grain and which is locally available, which is easily available. And there are millets. We are fortunate to have so many millets here uh, in India. We have Koda millet, we have foxtail millet, we have barnyard millet, and we have this uh, finger millet, prosa millet, and many others. So we can try these millets, we can include these millets, and these are rich sources of complex carbohydrates, fiber, protein, B vitamins, and zinc. But it is very important to use unrefined millets and unrefined greens, except for those who are suffering with severe inflammatory bowel disease. Because for some people who are suffering with severe inflammatory bowel disease, they may not be able to tolerate the whole grains. For them, they may have to go for, uh, you know, uh, hand pound rice or white rice. It depends. It's, uh, but otherwise, most others can easily enjoy these whole uh, rice varieties and unpolished millets in the whole form or in, in the form of atta. So I would like to explain about nuts and seeds. So these nuts and seeds provide us with uh, omega-3 fatty acids, the essential fatty acids. You know something, this omega-3 fatty acids uh, have an anti-inflammatory effect. These are very helpful in reducing the inflammation. So certain nuts such as walnuts and seeds such as chia seeds, flax seeds are really helpful in providing these omega-3 fatty acids. If we include these in our foods, we'll be able to get these fatty acids easily. So when starting with a plant-based diet, <clears throat> we may come up with lots of questions. We may have so many doubts, <clears throat> especially about protein, because we are eliminating dairy proteins, because, because we are eliminating animal proteins. Many people may have this doubt that whether we would be able to thrive on a plant-based diet, whether we would be able to get all the amino acids on a plant-based diet. So it's very simple actually to get uh, your proteins from plant foods. There are so many sources of protein in plant foods. Simply by consuming uh, millets, whole rice, some legumes and pulses, and some nuts and seeds, we can easily get a protein and uh, most of these protein are not inflammatory so these are ideal for people suffering with autoimmune diseases and it's always good to soak cereals um, especially the gluten-free cereals and also legumes before cooking so that the anti-nutrients are released and uh, the digestion of these would be easier proteins are even present in fruits and greens. So when you're following a plant-based diet, you just need to focus on variety. If you have varieties of plant-based foods, you'll be easily getting your protein. 
And another question which arises in our mind is about calcium. So many people uh, will be scared to remove dairy from their diet uh, because they fear that removing dairy would, uh, you know, would end up in calcium deficiency. One thing we have to understand is that there are very good sources of calcium in plant-based foods. We just need to think beyond milk. So if you want to get calcium, just think about beans and greens. These are good sources of calcium. And you know something? Sesame seeds are packed with calcium. Literally, sesame seeds have 10 times more calcium than dairy milk. So uh, you can add these sesame seeds to a salad or you can make a uh, sesame milk or you can use the sesame butter in some of your recipes so that your calcium needs are taken care of. And even some dry fruits have calcium in them. By consuming figs, uh, you can get calcium. Almonds have calcium. So don't worry about calcium when you're on a plant-based diet because a plant-based diet is really helpful in maintaining the calcium store in our body. When we consume too much acidifying foods, too much processed foods, too much refined foods, and uh, too much animal protein, that can lead to <clears throat> yeah, that can lead to uh, calcium loss. Whereas when we consume unrefined plant foods, uh, we are reducing the calcium loss, and we are also getting other nutrients. Uh, from these plant foods. For example, we get magnesium, manganese, and boron, and <clears throat> all these uh, nutrients are very essential along with calcium to build stronger bones. And don't forget that vitamin D is very essential to maintain healthy calcium level. So we are going to discuss about that too. So I'm going to uh, share some of the positive benefits of consuming plant-based diet. So if you're starting with a plant-based diet, it's not just going to help with, uh, the, with reducing the inflammation, but it's also helpful to tackle many other health problems. For example, with the help of a healthy plant-based diet, a carefully planned plant-based diet, you'd be able to reduce your weight and then maintain this. And for those who are underweight, they may be able to gain weight in a healthy way. And since these plant-based foods are free from cholesterol, uh, if you're having any other problems, like if you're having uh, <clears throat> dyslipidemia or you know high cholesterol levels, uh, you, you would be benefited by consuming plant-based foods. <clears throat> and plant-based foods, sorry. <clears throat> And plant-based foods lower oxidative stress and inflammation. Uh, this, this is what we have been discussing. Then plant-based foods can reduce the risk of type 2 diabetes and can even help in reversing type 2 diabetes. Plant-based foods can help reducing the risk of heart disease and also certain types of cancer. So these are the add-on benefits when you start on a plant-based journey to recover from any autoimmune disease. Apart from this, you may be experiencing very good energy levels. You may be experiencing uh, you know, less stress. You may be experiencing a calm state of mind, a relaxed state of mind because of the abundance of nutrients which are uh, essential for the nervous system, which you get through these plant foods. And uh, you may be feeling uh, you may be having more stamina and uh, you know your skin will be glowing. So these are other uh, positive side effects of uh, consuming a plant-based diet. So should we be worrying about uh, micronutrient deficiencies when we are on a plant-based diet? So most of the micronutrients and minerals we would be able to get from plant-based foods. For example, we get most of the vitamins, vitamin A, vitamin E, vitamin C are abundantly present in plant-based foods. 
and uh, most of the B complex vit vitamins except vitamin B12, all the B complex vitamins are present in plant based foods. And we can get most of the minerals, you know, magnesium, calcium, potassium, uh, zinc, all these are present in plant based foods. So we need not worry about these micronutrient deficiencies when we are consuming a plant-based diet, except this vitamin B12 and vitamin D, so which I'm going to explain in detail. So uh, if you're consuming a variety of plant-based foods, you'd be able to get most of these uh, micronutrients. And to ensure that you're uh, getting good quality nutrition, good, uh, uh, you, you can choose organic plant-based foods, uh, which have more uh, micronutrients present in them. So I would like to say a few words about vitamin B12 and vitamin D. So these two vitamins are very vital. So vitamin B12 is <clears throat> not easily found in any plant-based food. So when you are shifting to a plant-based diet, it is very essential that you have to take care of your vitamin B12 level. It is even better if you check your vitamin B12 level before shifting to a plant-based diet and then supplement accordingly. If your levels are low, you may need a supplement. This, uh, the details about the supplement can be obtained from your healthcare provider. You can check with your doctor or nutritionist. And this vitamin B12 is very important for the central nervous system. So if uh, we are lacking this vitamin B12, then this can lead to irreversible nerve damage. This can lead to various problems such as uh, pernicious anemia. This can also lead to <clears throat> uh, sleep disorders, anxiety, various problems. Uh, there is also another autoimmune disease called atrophic gastritis where, uh, you know, this uh, absorption of B12 will not be happening. There is something called intrinsic factor, which is present in the stomach, which is very essential for the absorption of vitamin B12. So in the atrophic gastritis, people uh, may be suffering with vitamin B12 deficiency. And uh, B12 deficiency can happen to anyone uh, who consumes lots of re refined foods and you know, junk foods, acidic foods, aerated drinks and alcohol. So we have to eliminate all these unhealthy foods and we have to start eating healthy plant foods along with proper B12 supplementation for the better absorption of vitamin B12. And many people with uh, autoimmune diseases may have problems in absorption. This is, because, this is again because of the leaky gut syndrome and also because of the inflammation happening in the intestines because the uh, large intestine is a place where some of the nutrients are absorbed and uh, certain other nutrients are even synthesized, for example, vitamin K2. Uh, we need to have a healthy gut in order for these vitamins and these nutrients to be absorbed properly. So those who are having autoimmune diseases may be prone to vitamin B12 deficiency, vitamin D deficiency, vitamin K2 deficiency, and uh, some people may not be able to convert this omega-3 fatty acids into EPA and DHA. These are various forms of these uh, omega-3 fatty acids. Uh, actually, when we consume these omega-3 fatty acids in plant foods, from the plant food sources, these have to be converted into EPA and DHA naturally in the intestines, but this may not happen uh, for people having this leaky gut and uh, inflammatory bowel disease. So uh, they may need special care and special attention uh, for these nutrients to be properly absorbed. So another important vitamin is this vitamin D or the sunshine vitamin. So we can easily get vitamin D from sunlight, but these days because of our modern lifestyle, 
uh, we are not properly exposing to sunlight and even if we expose to sunlight there are so many factors which can you know just block the uh, <clears throat> absorption of um, sunlight and the production of vitamin d under the skin so those who have so those who have autoimmune diseases may uh, have to consider vitamin D supplementation. So I'm seeing that you're uh, posting your questions. Yeah, I'm going to give you uh, 15 minutes uh, for answering your questions. So whatever questions you may have, please uh, write it there. I'll be answering your questions at the end of this session. So let me come back to this, to this vitamin D. So this vitamin D is one vital vitamin and it is very essential for a healthy immune system. So for most people with autoimmune diseases, this vitamin may be deficient. So we may have to start supplementing and there are supplements available these days, available from plant sources, uh, which will be very easier for them to observe. So when vitamin D is low, this can also lead to so many problems like fatigue and muscle pains, weak bones, osteoporosis, and uh, low immunity. So apart from having uh, this uh, vitamin D supplement, it's also a good idea to uh, a good idea to expose yourself to sunlight, except for those people who are having uh, some issues. For example, uh, some people who may have lupus may not be able to expose themselves to, themselves to sunlight because uh, they may get uh, skin rashes. So such people can avoid uh, sunlight, whereas most others would be able to, uh, you know, uh, expose to sunlight in a healthy way, just at least for 15 to 20 minutes. Okay, so uh, we can get this vitamin B12 and vitamin D from supplements uh, and vitamin D also from sunlight and omega-3s we can easily get from uh, certain nuts and seeds and also from some greens and also from some seaweeds. So these are the plant sources and it is very essential to include foods which are uh, rich in this healthy bacteria. So these foods we call as probiotic foods. These probiotic foods are very, very essential uh, in this anti-inflammatory diet plan when you're addressing, when you're treating your autoimmune disease. So where do we get these healthy bacteria from plant-based foods? It's very simple. These bacteria are present in the atmosphere. And when we make some fermented foods, it's very easy for us to uh, get these, you know, uh, to get these uh, uh, healthy bacteria. So there are so many dairy-free probiotic food options available. For example, you can simply make lacto-fermented vegetables. It's a form of a pickle, which you can simply enjoy every day. And it's a healthy plant-based probiotic uh, food. Then uh, there are other options like water kefir. You can also have uh, yogurts and curds made of coconut milk. And you can also try uh, yogurts and curds or buttermilk made of almond milk. So I hope you may be, mm, you may have uh, learned the techniques of how to make coconut milk, almond milk, almond curd, etc. Uh, in the cooking classes. So you'll be exploring more about that. And uh, one very simple probiotic drink is the fermented rice drink. This is very simple. Traditionally in South India, people used to drink this as a first thing in the morning uh, many years back, but now uh, it's not so. But we can uh, try this traditional and simple drink, which is gluten-free and rich in probiotics. That means the healthy bacteria. So 
It's very simple to make this fermented rice drink. You have to take a, a handful of cooked rice and put it in a bowl and add a glass of water and cover it with a cotton cloth and leave it aside for at least eight hours or more or even leave it overnight. So the next day or after eight hours, you'll be seeing that, that it has got fermented. Uh, there will be bubbles and uh, when it tastes this water, it may be sweetish and sour with an agreeable order. If there is any disagreeable order, you have to throw it away because it has gone bad with bad bacteria invasion. So ideally, it will be sweetish sour with a pleasant aroma. And you can have this water, just this water, not the rice, just this water. This serves as a very good probiotic drink and it is very cheap. You can make it easily at home. So always use unpolished rice or hand pound rice or brown rice uh, to make this fermented rice drink. And they can also make rejuvelac with whole brown rice. Uh, that is an, another raw probiotic uh, food which you can make. So when we include these type of types of uh, probiotic foods, it will be very helpful in healing the gut, in providing and replenishing the intestinal flora and helping in reducing inflammation and helping in improving the absorption of various nutrients. So I'm seeing uh, you have uh, so many questions. Uh, I'll be answering them. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, hi, doctor. This is uh, Rajat on the side. Yeah. Thank you for that very informative session. It was absolutely wonderful there. Thank you. Right. So, yeah, we do have a few questions. So, um, you can choose to answer them and then we can unmute the attendees. So, you can select your questions. And... Okay. So, I have uh, seven questions here. I hope I'll be able to answer all of these. Um, so there is a question from uh, one of our participants. This is, what are the signs uh, that you do not have a healthy gut? This is a very good question. If you're not having a healthy gut, the signs are uh, you may have blotting, you may have you know, malabsorption, that means certain nutrients may not be absorbed properly and uh, the bowel movements may not be proper. So these are some uh, of the symptoms of an unhealthy gut. So there is another question. Kindly explain what is a leaky gut. Uh, uh, doctor, just a moment. Yeah. Uh, yes. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, Vinita, we have unmuted you. Did that answer your question? Yes. Thank you. you have any further queries on that, Vinita? I think uh, that's fine. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your question. Yeah. So there is another question. Uh, kindly explain what is a leaky gut. So, uh, you know, as I said, our intestine has a protective layer of enterocytes and uh, these cells are, uh, you know, tightly uh, packed. And uh, because of various reasons, as I said, because of unhealthy food, because of some uh, chemicals, because of some toxins, because of, because of various reasons, uh, you know, this enterocytes, the, the space between these enterocytes uh, get wider. That means the junctions between the cells uh, that, uh, that become leaky that, uh, uh, and most of the unwanted things will be entering into the system. Uh, for example, foreign proteins, toxins, and certain allergens from foods can directly enter through these uh, um, spaces and enter into the bloodstream and increase the inflammation. So this is what we call a leaky gut. I hope uh, uh, I have answered this. And there is another question. Uh, is barley water also having gluten and not advisable to be consumed? So whole barley uh, or anything made with barley um, it's, it's better avoided for persons having autoimmune disease because though gluten sensitivity is not, uh, uh, gluten intolerance is not found in all people, 
it's it's better to remove gluten for a while when we are uh, trying this plant-based diet to reverse autoimmune diseases. Yeah, I hope I have answered that. I'll just check with Aruna. Yeah. Aruna, did that answer your question? No, we don't have our audio, but yeah, you can, uh, you can post your reply via chat. Okay. Yes. All right. All right. Okay. Can move on to the next. Please. Yeah. The next question is about psoriasis. What foods are recommended? Again, it's very simple. All plant-based foods, which are not inflammatory. That means fruits, vegetables, greens, and gluten-free grains, millets, and some nuts and seeds. And also some legumes uh, are dals and pulses, which are easy for you to digest. So when you start with a diet for a particular, to, to address a particular health issue, uh, it's always good to consult a, a healthcare provider or a nutritionist or a doctor who is well-versed with plant-based nutrition. So it will be very easy for you to uh, plan an individualized protocol. Thank you. All right. Um, yes, I think that was self-explanatory. But yeah, in case uh, Jayanti, if if you have any further queries, please post via chat. Okay, we'll address the same. Okay. Yes, doctor. So there is. Yeah, the there is a, yeah, there is another question. What is water kefir? So water kefir is a uh, is a probiotic drink which is made with these kefir grains, which are available. Uh, online or you can purchase from organic stores. So you have to uh, make a drink by activating the kefir grains uh, by putting them in a solution in jaggery solution. And then once it gets activated, you will get a fermented drink. So this is suggested as a very good source of healthy bacteria. Uh, this can be taken 50 ml per day. And uh, we can also make a uh, kefir with tender coconut water. So that would be totally uh, free from jaggery and other sugar. So uh, I hope uh, this has answered your question. Thank you. Uh, yes, doctor. Yeah, and there is one more question and a final question we have. Uh, this is from uh, Subha and she has asked, I have been diagnosed with SLE on 2004 till 2016. I didn't get any flare and I did not follow any diet plans and I was leading normal life. Now I'm getting mild flares. Does gluten-free diet helps to avoid flares? If so, how does it take and how do I know that it helps? Thanks. So uh, if you are going to try a gluten-free plant-based diet that is very essential. If you're just eliminating gluten and if you're continuing with all those anti-inflammatory foods and dairy and other foods, sorry, uh, all the inflammatory uh, proteins and other foods such as dairy and uh, other foods, it may not be very helpful. So I would recommend trying a whole food plant-based diet, which is also gluten-free, that can definitely help avoid the flares. And you can also do the tests, like you can test your ANA, you can test this DSDNA. There are certain tests to assess the progress of this disease. So through clinical parameters, through blood tests, and through your own experience, you'll be able to know that you are uh, in the process of recovering from SLE. So I have seen people getting much better uh, from SLE after following a plant-based diet, eliminating gluten. I hope this, I hope I have answered your question. Thank you so much. Okay, doctor, we have a couple more questions. Yeah. Okay, so you can, uh, can you see those in the chat window? This one yes. monitor? Yeah, yeah. Yes, I'm just gonna try to unmute her. Mm -hmm. In case that happens, yeah, but you can please go ahead to answer that. Okay, <clears throat> so, uh, we have a few more questions. So how do I know I'm allergic to gluten and how, uh, if a plant-based diet helps, how long does it take? It, it depends because it depends upon the chronicity of the disease and it also depends upon uh, uh, you know, the toxic foods which we have taken already. So uh, we, have to, we have to be patient, little patient once we 
try this plant-based diet? And how do I know if I'm allergic to gluten? So if a particular person is uh, intolerant to gluten or allergic to gluten, so gluten allergy may, be, may show severe symptoms, whereas uh, for gluten intolerance, there may be symptoms like blotting after, after consuming wheat or any gluten-rich grains. And some people may uh, have discomfort, some people may, uh, especially in the abdomen, some people may have even diarrhea or uh, frequent stools. So any discomfort in your uh, tummy after consuming uh, wheat or barley or rye can be a symptom of uh, gluten intolerance. Besides this, there can also be severe symptoms, severe allergenic symptoms. Yeah, thank you. There is another question uh, from... Uh, Vinita, would you consider bipolar disorder an autoimmune disease? What food groups do you recommend for a person suffering from this disorder? So uh, to answer this question, uh, <clears throat> I'm not very sure. Honestly, I'm not very sure whether this can be uh, included in the um, autoimmune disease, uh, but definitely trying a plant-based diet can be helpful uh, because a plant-based diet is rich in so many nutrients which are essential for the nervous system, the central nervous system. And taking care of the vitamin B12 and D levels can also be helpful because these deficiencies of these vitamins can also lead to certain psychiatric problems, severe deficiencies. So it's always good to try a plant-based diet. Thank you. All right. Yeah, I, I have two other questions. So from each of this, my granddaughter, six years, is a type 1 diabetic diagnosed in January 2017. From February 2017, we started plant-based food. Since March 2017, she's not on insulin because the sugars are in control without insulin. Wonderful. My questions are, is there any hope of getting cured? How to increase her weight as on plant-based diet? Her weight is not increasing. And is there any test I should do to check her growth levels? Should I avoid the high glycemic index or high glycemic load fruits for her? First of all, congratulations for uh, trying a plant-based diet and achieving this results. So is there any hope of getting cured? There are chances. So continue with this plant-based diet plan, taking care of the vitamin B12 and D levels. And uh, there are more chances she may get cured, uh, but this cannot be assured. This depends upon each person's uh, you know, body type, uh, reaction to the uh, diet plan and all. So let's wait and see. How to increase her weight is on a plant-based diet. So this is a, an interesting question. So we have to uh, address certain factors uh, which may be uh, hindering her from gaining weight. For example, there may be parasites, we have to deworm if parasites are there, and then we have to uh, focus on certain food groups which may be helpful. We have to uh, we have to avoid uh, certain foods which may be uh, triggering autoimmune reactions, and we have to uh, include certain foods, healthy fats, and uh, we can even increase the calories by having uh, starch-based foods. Uh, Nothing to worry about starch-based foods when you are on a plant-based diet that can be helpful in gaining weight. And one more thing is that uh, with diabetes, there are more chances for muscle wasting. So it may take uh, some time. Once the disease is completely reversed, the body will start uh, you know, uh, putting on weight. So we have to wait and see. And is that... Yeah, no, sorry. Um, yeah, you were saying, but please continue. Yeah, and uh, is there any test I should do to check her growth levels? I don't think uh, uh, if her uh, milestones are normal, if uh, if she's uh, healthy, then there is no other test apart from the uh, diabetes test. Um, should I avoid the high glycemic index or high glycemic load fruits for her? It is good to uh, avoid the high glycemic index fruits such as watermelon and pineapple initially. Uh, and once you have achieved reversal, these fruits can also be 
reintroduced and uh, I don't think we may have to reduce the intake of high glycemic load fruits unless otherwise there is, uh, you know, problems with the sugar levels or there may be fluctuations. Okay. So she can enjoy all fruits as far as possible. Okay, Vinita, uh, would you like to add something there or ask? Can you just talk, speak a bit louder? We heard you briefly for a moment. I think we've lost your audio now. All right, so yeah, if you have any further questions, you can please yeah. uh, address those and, and we'll make yeah. sure. That yeah, and there is place. one more question I think I have to answer. Yes, please. Uh, yeah, this is about <clears throat> SLE. What is the best way to get vitamin D for lupus patients? So the best way is to uh, have a plant-based vitamin D supplement, which will be free from cholesterol and uh, will be easier for uh, these patients to observe. And also, can you give us more insight on lupus since there is very little awareness on it in India? Yeah, this lupus erythematosus uh, is a systemic autoimmune disease which can affect different parts of the body, such as joints, skin, and kidneys, blood cells, brain, heart, and even lungs. So this can even lead to, uh, you know, uh, very strong, uh, very uh, uh, dangerous complications. Uh, this can be life-threatening at times. Um, normally, lupus is treated with uh, antibi uh, sorry, steroids and steroidal medications, and uh, sometimes people may need hospitalization if there are flare-ups with uh, multiple system complications. But once you start with a plant-based diet, the severity of this disease gets uh, reduced. Slowly and steadily, uh, there will be improvement. And we can also see improvement in the parameters like uh, this DSDNA or whatever tests which they are doing for uh, confirming lupus. Even, in, even the ANA levels, we can see improvement. And the health of the patient also gets better and the symptoms get controlled. Um, so there are some people who have even reversed lupus successfully, but uh, <clears throat> the success rate is not uh, you know, universal. It depends upon uh, various factors, but it is always good to try a plant-based diet uh, if somebody is uh, diagnosed with lupus because it's not going to harm any way. It's only going to give more benefits. Okay, so doctor, also um, by exposing the skin to the sun, we'd also get vitamin D intake. So how many minutes a day do you recommend? So I would say uh, if uh, the person can tolerate uh, up to 20 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes. And uh, ideally, uh, if, if we are exposing to sunlight, we can simply stop when we feel heated up. I mean, when the body feels heated up, we can stop. And it's, it's a good idea not to take bath immediately after uh, exposing to sunlight. And it's always good to avoid sunscreen lotions when we are about to uh, expose to sunlight because this can hinder the absorption of vitamin D, the production and absorption of vitamin D. Okay. So that question was by Monica. Did that answer your query? You can, you can talk if we have your audio. No, I, uh, we don't have our audio. But yeah, you can please okay. post your reply in case if it's unanswered. All right, so I think we are we're through with all the questions. We'll just do one yeah. final check here. Oh, yeah, she has replied. It did answer her query. Okay, it great. Doctor, so, yeah, so, mm, so, Dr. Ishwar is asking you for mm -hmm. your mobile number for personal consultation. So, you have Ishwar's yeah. number here with you. And do so, you know of any patient who has cured type 1 diabetes? Could you please answer that, Dr.? Yeah, in my experience, I have not seen a complete cure for type 1 diabetes, but I have seen improvement. 
Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yes, I think this has been a very informative session. Thank you. I think uh, we have gone at length, right from 5 p.m. till 6:30, and uh, yeah, there's a lot of useful information here. So, if anybody would want to access this presentation here or would want more information, please feel free to drop a message here on chat or also with Dr. Rupa. Um, and and you, you can be assured your queries will be answered. So we'd like to thank all of you for your time. And it was a pleasure having you here with us. Okay, and uh, we look forward to meeting most of you at the closing ceremony of the IMSA Festival. Okay, thanks again and wish you a nice day. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining this session. And I wish you all vibrant health by uh, choosing healthy plant-based foods. Thank you again. Thank you very much, Dr. Bye. Okay. Bye, everyone. Bye.